Hello, and welcome to tonight's stream, where I am going to be doing some more work on the overlay, trying to get the observatory room finished. Martina, welcome in. How are you doing? Glad you could catch the stream. Welcome to the stream. I'm happy to see you here. Uh, so yes, we are going to be doing some work on the overlay, seeing what we can get done around here. Uh, but yeah, let me, as it's your first time, let me show you around. So um, I am the Pilkybot. I am, well, a robot. I have many skills, such as looking up, looking down, looking to the sides, and um, looking all around. I can also look without moving, which is a wonderful magic trick. So yeah, uh, this is my spaceship. There are many spaceships out there, uh, some by uh, certain, um, I, I, I hear there are pirates out there. Um, maybe I, I can uh, go visit them one day because pirates sound like fun. But we will see. But yes, this is my spaceship with many doors that do not do anything. And many um, buttons and levers that do not do anything. You, you, you may uh, start noticing a theme here. Um, the panel up here that doesn't do anything. Lights that don't really do anything. This table does, though. This table is uh, one of the things I'm most proud of. Because I can make it show stuff like this. And have holographic projections up which has been a lot of fun to code because this is using all the shader stuff in Unity to make it all glitch and everything, which is uh, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Jess, uh, let's turn that off before anyone comes in and thinks that I'm going to be right back. But yes, yeah, so tonight, as I say, we are going to be doing some more work on the observatory. So I think we should probably head over into, um, well, what was the conference room and is oh, what was the conference room and is uh, now going to be the observatory and take a look at where things are. So yeah, this room at the moment is um, plain. I I, I I think plain is the, uh, the correct word for it. Uh, though you do get a nice view if you uh, aren't getting sucked out into space. But this here on screen is the new setup, which I'm currently in the process of uh, re-doing. Uh, so this is basically this empty room here. I'm knocking through a few walls and doing a bit of a painting and it's going to become a multi-level observatory slash uh, streaming room which will be a lot of fun so we will uh, see if we can get this done and get it into unity because i mean it's already in there but i want to get it in and get it working and play around with all the camera stuff because that is what's going to be the most fun uh so how is everyone uh, this evening, how have your days gone? Right, let's hide these because what I need to do is I need to organize this. Um, yeah, I will. these together oh kieran i've realized something so you know how yesterday i was talking about how if you group things together and they end up um like not actually being in the group i figured something out about blender so if i parent these to empty you notice this is here and notice how it hasn't actually grouped them in. 
Oh, thanks for the follow, Martin, there. Oh. Uh, Unity. Well, the overlay is not working. What should have happened is... Um, where's my debug stuff? What should have happened is this should have happened. So... But thank you for the follow. Uh, which, yes, Kieran, uh, this is what I was talking about yesterday. So can you see how over here these are greyed out because they're not technically in here. They're just references. Uh, so if I rename that to window frames, I figured out why that is. It's because they're not in the collection. Because if you watch here, if I, well, if I take window frames and move it into the window frames collection, they suddenly move into it. If I move Windows frames out of the collection, so the, you can only have something belong to one collection. So what I want to do is have window frames in the scene collection, select these, and then move them to scene collection, and then all these, uh, I should be able to unlink and yeah, they still exist. So yeah, what I've learned is just don't use collections or rather collections can be used, but they should sort of be treated almost as, um, layers. Uh, what I do need to do is uh, fix all the origins of these. Where on earth? Um, on. Uh, origin to center of mass volume. Okay. Okay, see you in a bit, Kieran. Uh, Yes, this should hopefully, once I get, um, these few bits, uh, done, we should be able to start focusing on getting this into Unity and running around the full spaceship. Well, not the full spaceship, because there's still the bulk of it left to do, but at least getting a much bigger room to play around with. Right, so this should all be done. And then for the window frames, what I want to do is shift this. And let's stick it on this frame. frames are done so then I just need to grab those stick those there and set them into frame Grab those to uh, do, 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 do empty and this one is going to be called um, exterior and then the inner wall, the screen, and the walkway can be parented to oh, to be made visible. Why? Oh, because they weren't visible when I set to them. And there can be interior. Now interior and exterior, I can um Let's just hide. Uh, if you put display 
name and from this one name. Uh, I'll leave the name front on. Uh, but we want this to be zero. Oh, gotten to turn the hub on. Yeah, that is painful. Like, oh, my food's ready. No. <laughs> Hopefully it cooks quickly now though. All right, let's hide those. Uh, window frames, I can 0.2. Walkway wants to be 0.2. Uh, another trick I learned, Kieran, is uh, realizing that you can actually take something that has children and move it around without moving the children, which was something I have found very useful doing this because it puts the uh, empties in not the best place. So I'm ready to out and then I can delete that. I can delete that and voila! We've got interior, exterior. That I, I've heard that too as well, uh, Martina. In fact, Kieran, I, I'm pretty sure it's birds that like it cold. So uh, it should be fine for you. Oh, the, the old electric late ones the like old electric hubs are like the worst of all worlds they don't heat correctly but they're also incredibly slow and they also use a ridiculous amount of energy for what they do Best thing I ever did, best thing I ever bought for a kitchen was being convinced to get an induction hub. Those things are magic. <laughs> Primarily because they're so easy to clean and when I have had gas hubs, they are the worst to clean and they always end up with loads of scratches and stuff when you take them apart and you scrub them and you never get them right clean whereas induction hubs it's just a flat piece of ceramic that you can just wipe down or scrape with a glass cleaner and the cool thing is this is a thing that's super cool if a pan actually boils over because the glass doesn't get super hot you can actually just wipe like lift it up and wipe it so you can like clean as you're cooking you just lift the pan up wipe up whatever spilled over and put the pan back down Right, so I think we're done here because I'm possibly not going to text you here. You go on, Dev. Thank you for subscribing and glad you uh, like copies. Not actually working on copies tonight, but uh, I have been doing a, a few more bits of copies off stream, doing some more tests and hopefully we can get the next version of it out uh soon uh just want to get all those tests in place just so that i've got confidence uh in all the changes that i've done i don't want to release something that uh is buggy when i could have avoided it uh copies is my app uh, if you give me a second, just so I don't, I'll show you, uh, just do that. Yeah, because I did not want, definitely don't want to show that. Ah, oh, what is that? I have no idea what that is. Hello, Zay. Uh, welcome in. All right, let's open up copies and launch it. And I'll show you not only copies, but the uh, next version of copies. 
What on earth is that? Oh, authentication failing. Oh, that's cool. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's what I'm working on that. I mean, it's uh, it's a bit less cute when uh, you see, um, well, uh, when you see uh, this thing up here, because that was uh, when my face was uh, still in progress. You could, as, as you can see, it is, um, well, uh, a little more cute when it's sad now. Though it still needs some work. So, yeah. Uh, what we are going to do is, if I show you copy, so the uh, best way to show copies is to open the sample document. Glad you like it, Zay. <laughs> so idea behind Coppice is it's sort of a mix of three different types of apps. There's note-taking apps where you just take loads of text and images and stuff and just throw them in. So you've got that sort of app. On top of that, you've got a wiki, so you can actually link them together. So if I go up here and, for example, click on pages, it will take me to this document here, then I can go to image pages and go and I can move all around. But it is also partly like mind mapping as well. So when you put all these on a canvas, like normally this would be all most of the apps do. You get a document, you can put stuff in. If you want to go through, you've got to click through all the pages, you got to search them and so on. With copies, you can stick them on the canvas and then you can click and it will open for you and then you can click again and it opens the linked page and then you can have other things that will all link up so I've been adding some new features so the last version I released uh, I had the ability to also add hotspots on a page on an image so I can now select that and then link this to let's just link this to uh, copies pro uh, so when I go out of that and I click on that you can actually link from uh, an image to another page and it gets even cooler because I get to do some uh, machine learning stuff so if I let me just uh, take a screenshot of chat, create a new image page, and paste it in. Now, what what happens if I have a text page here? And let's say uh, I uh, do I have it enabled? I do. Uh, so since the beginning in text pages if i was for example to name this let's say image inspector if you look down here you can see we've got the text image inspector if i do that it realizes oh there's a page now called image inspector and there's text here so i'll create a link to it so that links here but it gets even better because it also works on images. So uh, let's call this uh, stream elements. You see, this has just appeared up here and it actually links this page. It has seen the text, searched for the image, found that there is text in the image that matches the page title and created a link for you. Which I'm Pretty proud of that. I mean, I say pretty proud. It was incredibly simple to do because most of the code for finding the text in the image Apple provides. So I just hook into that. But I mean, I can also like rename this to uh, awesome and it removes the link there and shifts it down there. So that was all the last version. The version that I've been working on now is uh, working and Hugo you may like uh, some of this 
working on improving linking. Uh, is it OCI? Yeah, it's optical character recognition, though. I mean, OCI is. It's not really optical character recognition to a degree, because optical character recognition is more scanning from a physical page. But it's the same concept. Uh, once you have it in, you have like the scan comes into an image and then it sort of works out what it is. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. You can sort of have a library of, okay, these look this specific way. Uh, like if you have like monospace type or something like that, it can detect it. Or you can do, do just full uh, like machine learning stuff and just train it up like that, which is what Apple has done. And the cool thing is it actually works in multiple languages as well. So I think it works in, uh, what's Apple sport? English, French, German, Spanish, Chinese. Think maybe Japanese. Hello, Ainoki. How are you doing? So yes, what I have worked on on the latest version of Coppice is if I let let's say that I have a page here. And I call it Image Inspector. So I've added a page called Image Inspector. Now I've got a link here. I've got the page here. And one thing with copies is when you have multiple, well, basically a page can appear multiple times. So I've got image page there. I could, uh, let's see, I've got pages here. I could drag pages out again. So I've got pages there. I could click text pages. You see, I've got text pages there, text pages there. So I've got multiple versions uh, of the same page. So what if I've already got a page on? Well, previously you haven't been able to do that. What you can do now though, is rather, if I just click that, it opens a new one. If I command click though, it's going to link to an existing page. So that's one thing you can do. What about if you want to keep a page on, but get rid of the link? Well, I can just click on the link and delete it. What if you've got multiple links on the page and it's like, okay, I've got an arrow coming out. Which one of these does this link uh, relate to? Well, now you can hover over and it highlights, okay, it's this link here. What if you've got multiple uh, arrows coming out of a page and you want to see, okay, where am I linked to? We can hover over a link and it will highlight them there. And then possibly my favorite is, let's say I wanted to actually have paste, let's say, hmm, select, pasting an image. Let's say I wanted this to link to there. Well, previously what you had to do was command L, uh, image inspector and then open and so on you can now do that but even better is if i uh let's remove link so i've got this selected and if i select this command option l suddenly i have an arrow here and I can hover over pages to tell it to link to a page. So I can now click on that and it does it all in one step. It adds the link, adds the stuff there. So this is what I've been working on the past few months, getting all this stuff working, which really should be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, so while I've been doing that, I haven't been keeping up with chat. So, uh, duh, duh, duh. Uh, you should make a web version for those that don't have iOS. So, at some point in the future, I will probably, I may not make a full web version, but I do want to at least make it where you can export to the web. Uh, the next platform I want to get it on is iPad. So I want to build this for the iPad. 
and that will probably be something that I work on next year. Let's see. And the app is really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we, so Windows is, um, I mean, it's something that I potentially work, like, develop for, but maybe in the future, because I don't really know a huge amount about developing for Windows, whereas a lot of my knowledge of Mac dev transfers to iPad because they're basically very similar. Uh, ways to run Linux on Windows. So Mac isn't quite Linux. Mac is Unix. And Linux is sort of Unix, but not Unix. So there are ways that you can get Linux and Unix working together. Unfortunately, getting Mac apps working on Windows is harder because it's stuff that isn't on Linux or Windows, really. So you've got to do all sorts of stuff, especially now that like I this is not currently running. It does run on Intel Macs, but I'm not running on an Intel Mac at the moment, so. So yeah, I mean, part of the problem is like Windows and ARM and stuff doesn't really work as much, but. Uh, but yeah, Martin, uh, it hopefully be coming to the iPad. Uh, like I say, I want to start working on it next year uh, for the iPad. So fingers crossed it will come out and be able to, uh, you'll be able to use it there. Cause I know a lot of people don't have Macs. They do have Windows, but they also have iPads. So, uh, how long have I been working on it? So, well, I can actually uh, give you a precise answer because uh, if I go into version control, I can go into the history and I can scroll all the way back to the beginning. And my first commit was the 9th of July, 2019. So that was when I first uh, uh, started working it. Now I didn't release it until uh, November 2020, I think it was. So it's been nearly two years and it's just a case of, cause I have to work on it part-time because I've got contract work that brings in the bulk of my income. Uh, I'm sort of working on it part-time, so it's, slowly making progress but i'm pretty pleased with how things are going so far uh, you should probably know more about developing for windows than you do you're primarily a web software the thing is you don't need to know too much about windows development if you're primarily doing web stuff like you, you need to know about developing on windows but that's different about developing for windows like you can develop for web on the Mac and not know anything about Mac development. So the web is its own kettle of fish. Yeah, that's Coppice. And this is the observatory that uh, I think is about ready for me to open up Unity. Okay, see you in a bit. I know, okay. Thanks for dropping in. All right, let's open up the overlay. But yeah, copies. No, nope. first question for you: Would there be working text to speech on that app? Uh, yes. Uh. It uses the built-in uh, text-to-speech. So, I mean, uh, if I... Now, let's open up the uh, existing version. Is that not going to work? Uh, let's create a new document then. Uh, so, you actually have... Uh, If I, uh, where are we? Which, that one, the voiceover. Uh, 
Give me one second. I can't bring the voice up. Oh, maybe I can. Um. Okay, so hopefully if I press this, you should be able to, uh, in fact, I'll turn the, I'll just pause the music. So you should be able to hear voiceover. Of two eight, zip copy, untitled window, layout area, layout area, out of can verticals, canvas list, group, vertical splitter, sidebar, group. You so, are currently on a group to interact with items in this group. Press control, option, shift, down arrow. So hopefully you can hear that, but this is voiceover. This is just built into the Mac and to iPad and iPhones and stuff. So it's should can vertical canvas editor in canvas editor group in layout area in first page first top right handle in top right one up one 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 updated item. You are currently on the handle inside a group. Voiceover off. So yeah, that is a. Uh... Voiceover, you should be able to do pretty much everything. Now, in the new version, I haven't got all of the added functionality working in Voiceover yet, so I need to get that done before I can release. Uh, but yeah, so it all should just work with, uh, well, at least when I get it on the iPad, it will work with Voiceover because one of the things I do is make sure my stuff is fully accessible with Apple's tools. So it will work with uh, all of uh, the built-in stuff that I think Apple's added some text-to-speech stuff. I mean, you can have, um, uh, if I just type hello world, uh, at least on the Mac. Hello world. The, there is a right-click speech, start speaking. I'm not sure if that's on iPad, but it should be in theory. But yeah, I, I try to make everything uh, as accessible as possible. So, and some of it is kind of tricky to make accessible. <laughs> so, it's it's a fun challenge. It pushes me uh, making UI like this uh, accessible. Version of that. I don't care about that. Right. Oh, yes, uh, I need to export this. Uh, export FBX. Right, so if I export this to... Oh, hang on. Chip Observatory, export there. I can then hide that, come here. And hopefully, there we go. So we have this in. Uh, next up is making sure the floor needs to not let me go through. Yeah, I'm hoping copies on the iPad will work in a very similar way because I use my iPad a lot and I want copies on the iPad. And it's just unfortunately, maybe a lot of work, so I can't say exactly when it will come out. All I can say is that I'm working on this current version, then the next version on the Mac is getting it in the Mac App Store, and then after that, it's working on stuff on the Mac while also doing an iPad version next year. So that's my plan for next year, iPad version. All right.
you know what let's zero 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 this so that one bridge is always going to be zero zero then i can move everything else around yeah very big plans hopefully And I'm developing it all on stream, so. Oh, the world's the world's kind of a, a, a small place, Kieran. Why why not the universe? All right, let's hide the roof so I can look in here. I have just realized I'm missing my control panel over there. Um, have I exported it? I have not. Okay. Um, video overlay, Unity, Stream Overlay, Blender, Bridge Controls. Export FBX. Um, models. Uh, nope. Uh, this should be bridge controls. There's always a reverb when you talk about the universe. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will uh, import in. tweak that later but uh, okay now we want uh, cameras where are our cameras bridge camera Okay, so the bridge camera and the bridge alternate camera and the hollow camera all need to shift along to about here. And then I should be able to enable that. That looks good. And the... Bridge alternate, can, um, uh, alternate camera looks good. Okay. 
Uh, what else do I need to do? Uh, well, the bridge can, uh, before I do that. And that's 111, and this wants to be. Uh, no, that can't be 111. That can. Okay, so the bridge can dump in there. Uh, we want bridge to observatory. Uh, create empty doors. Doors can go in there. I need to create more doors, but I'll do that. Um, in fact, no, let's get all the doors in now. Uh, first thing I want to do is, um, materials. I need to extract materials. there all right um i need another folder in there for materials because there are some materials that are just for the bridge such as uh the hatches and bridge floor and roof Hmm. Wait. I thought I had, um, let's try this one again to see if it works. Uh, Excel data. Oh no, cause I need to, uh, then uh do, do excel data unpack resources um there we go so let's save that and open the bridge Uh, Excel data, pack resources. Okay, so they're already packed. So if I Excel data, unpack resources. Oh, did that wrong. Um, why did that not? that out of the way is it because there was already a well why is that not working export I still have data unpack resources no files to unpack okay export those data Pack resources, I'm able to pack. Oh no, it, it did uh, do them. So I can copy those to models. Um, it, Bridge and see so the textures in there. Uh, it's the textures I wasn't correctly, I it had exported them, but I'd forgotten to properly export them. So, with the textures, the bridge floor, I can throw the base map in there. Uh, for the bridge roof, I can throw um, 
the base map. And, uh, oh, no, that isn't the base map. Um, it is uh, the normal map. No, I think the uh, the roof is the wrong way around. It is. Okay, so now we can hide that again. Hatches, uh, then we do want that from there. We've got our hatches in. Why? One day like that. Is that just shadow? Or are the normals? Oh, for crying out loud. Why are the normals messed up? View our normals. Hmm? Uh, so that, 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 that. Normals on the outside. Am I also going to need to do them over here? Nope, oh, they're outside, 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 outside. Okay. I just need to export that again. FBX. There we go. They're all working. Everything looks good there. So hopefully, if I run, everything on the bridge should work. Uh, okay, so I'm locked down there. that all works there are no colliders yet so we need to sort that out but I can move up there just fine I can move here just fine and the real test is I mean, um, I say that looks okay. Maybe. Okay, let's fix that. Why is that so big? Hello, 
controller. Uh, Let's have a look see into the code. Oh. I bet I know why. All right, if I create an empty parent, And I apply this to the parent. All right, I should be able to uh, copy property and I go here and paste. Okay, and then here. I can go zero zero one one one. Then the scaling is done up here. And the reason that big one happened is because I have an animation that scales it when it appears. Uh, that had been done based on having a size of one, which it no longer has. So hollow screen container so now if I do this and we go and have a look there we are it's the correct size probably be a bit higher but just a bit okay Oh, need to sneeze. One second. Uh, that was one of those where it's like, you can feel like you need to sneeze for ages before you actually do sneeze. But anyway, now that all that is done, what I want to do is on these doors, Throw some materials in. But yeah, I've been taking plenty of uh, cold medicine today because I'm pretty sure I'm coming down with a cold. I woke up this morning with a scratchy throat and was very tired. Uh, and I've started feeling better during the day, but... Uh, what do I think? Um... So these want to be structure and panel what I picked for those. There we go. So duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. Uh, ah, why must all these apps work ever so slightly differently and completely mess me up? I used to be so good at using all the hotkeys and stuff in Photoshop, and now it's got to the point where both in Unity and Photoshop, I keep trying to use the Blender hotkeys. It's like, okay, I want to move something. I'm going to hit G and move it around, and it doesn't work. Uh, so we need one bridge to observatory, uh, bridge to left, uh, bridge to, uh, crew quarters. Uh, 
Um, bridge to, I think, uh, might end up being a lab at the back. Rev, engineering is going to shift downstairs. And I also actually need another one, which is going to be uh, observatory to engineering. Uh, so let's position these. Uh, both of those need to shift over here. Bridge to lift. And go there, and crew quarters can go in there. Just make sure these are lined up correctly. Um, that one seems to be. That needs to be just over a bit. Observatory to engineering. Needs to shift down here. needs to move a bit actually um, let's just shift this out the way okay so then this needs to shift just a tad that way Fantastic, and then 90 degrees around the axis here. got all the doors in place uh, what I need to do now I've just had an idea let's do a quick Google blender uh, material uh, materials between files Oh yeah, I can link them, can't I? Okay, we may give that a try then. Hello again, 3D Addict. How are you doing? Alright. So we seem to be good there. Let's add our floor uh, colliders. So for these floors, I'm actually going to use a mesh collider. And the mesh collider is not very well, it's far, it's the least efficient form of collider, 
but because they're fairly simple mesh it they're simultaneously simple meshes but also complex to do uh i think i can get away with them performance wise uh right i am good thank you uh just getting various things done uh okay, hanging out going to bed now okay sleep well martina and hopefully uh see you in the morning on the bird and bear stream And thanks for dropping in. Hopefully you can uh, make it again sometime. <laughs> right, where are we? Uh, screen focus and conference cam. Need to shift there. Uh, right. I'm pretty sure a lot of the camera setup is going to have to completely change because I tried going for something simple, but each room is going to need its own uh, setup. Parented that wrong. I'm gonna to have to fix that. Uh, but we don't need to fix it right now. Uh, let's let's run. And if I bring this over here. Alright. Okay, I need to conference cam, set that to one and that to zero. What? Oh yeah, it needs to aim and pause it. There we go. I can move around. I can even head down here. I can head back up. Oh, and I've fallen through the world. Oh, we have all the floors working. So that is the, in fact, let me just check one thing. Uh, if they're close enough, I can't fall through there. Okay. So now, we're going to need some more colliders. So the ship, all the outer walls are going to have uh, Colliders, and then each room can have colliders and so on. That one thing I want to do is, before I forget, set that to zero. Set to composer and set it to look at 
upper neck and okay so what we can do now is uh Hello Snowtwig, uh, thank you for the raid. Uh, unfortunately a lot, of, oh that's a fair point. Uh, let me restart the overlay, just one second. At some point I need to get this stuff working because it's refreshed my stuff, but then I need to do that. Uh, oh, and then it needs to I wish OBS would fix this. Okay. So now all the various uh, things should happen because we didn't get the subscription alert through. We didn't get the following alert through. This should all work now. Uh, for example, if I throw a bug, yep, that's working. Okay. So how are you doing, Snowtwig? Uh, so. Uh, box collider. So, uh, I can, uh, stretch these out. Very sleeping cozy. Oh, that that's always the best way to be. I've actually been doing some investigations into the whole trying to be cozy thing. Because uh, the downstairs in my house is always super cold. And it shouldn't be because this is a, a new build house it should it's got like double glazing and everything all over the place it's got insulation and all the walls and the floor and it should be good and i figured out okay so the back room downstairs that seems to keep its heat well so i'm almost 100 percent certain that it's the whole way that is losing all of the heat in the house and it's either due to the door to the garage or the door out to the front and I think it's a mixture of both so I'm going to be spending a while messing around with various things trying to get the house not to lose heat because everywhere else in the house is perfectly fine temperature wise it's just that one uh, it's just the whole way that is the problem so if i can fix that it'll be a very well insulated house and i'll be happy so well the sealant around the windows and everything is fine it's I think what it is, uh, is primarily the door to the garage, it doesn't fully seal, like it has, it's one of those, it's like an internal door that goes to the garage, that obviously it just has a garage door that lets all the heat out, but it does have those brushes going around that help seal it, 
The problem is it doesn't seal around where the door handle is because there's no brushes there. It doesn't seal where the hinges are because there's no brushes. And at the bottom, they stuck a draft excluder on, but the thing is, there's like a, a centimetre gap between, because it steps down to the garage floor. It's like a centimetre gap there. So the uh, draft excluder on the bottom doesn't act, it's just hanging in midair, so it's about as useful as a, a chocolate teapot. Uh, I am doing good, uh, Snowtwig, and the overlay is doing fairly well. We're just getting everything built up again. But yeah, I've partially fixed the bottom of it by where the uh, skirting board is in the garage underneath the door. Basically folding up some cardboard and taping it in so it should hopefully hopefully um hold most of the heat out it uh most of the cold air out which it seems to do it's just a few places it still leaks so it's just working out all those last leaks i mean the whole way is always going to be colder because the whole way goes up to a set of stairs and the stairs go up multiple floors so all the heat that is generated downstairs is inevitably going to rise all the way up to the top so i think i did ask but i don't know whether snowtwig got stuck in like advertisements when i asked I need to get better at that, realising that, oh, pre-rolls are on, so the questions that I ask when someone raids may not actually, uh, <laughs> may not actually uh, appear, because Twitch. It would be nice if when a raid happens, they didn't run pre-rolls. Like, if someone just pops in, fine. But if someone raids, it would be great if they didn't run any pre-rolls. Okay, I think I'm going to have to do this upper and lower. Uh... Right, so observe sorry back upper observatory back uh, no front upper. and then I want to duplicate them and have a lower and a lower. Just finishing some UVing. Oh, cool. What have you been uh, UVing? Anything that you want to share? Is it something like... Is it something for fun, for work or anything okay Uh, 
go this way. Scale like so. That can stick along there. So these actually need to be uh, observatory. Bridge. Oh, not either. There's a four-claw machine for future unity project. Oh, cool. Future projects are always uh, fun. Especially when done in Unity. Uh, so, observatory, outer, front, lower. Oh dear, many meetings. <sighs> meetings are never like future projects. Good future meetings. Not so much. Right. So I do need to rotate. Uh, let mm. let's do it this way so I can see. Oh, meetings are part of my job as well. I know, okay, just. They're never massively enjoyable. again Do that.
Okay, last one. Uh, duplicate. For now, I want that to go there like that. Okay, so we have colliders in. Um, probably, uh, what if I rotated that back? I rotate. These. Uh, so that wants to be plus 22. That wants to be plus 22. But can shift these out a bit. Okay, so if I hide the observatory, I can go like this. Uh, you know, you were very much encouraged to have stand-up meetings every morning. It was a double-edged sword because it was useful to touch base on who was doing what, but it sucked because you just want to buckle down and get on with your work. I mean, I, we do have, like, my contract work we do have stand-ups but that's only twice a week because we're very a very remote based company so it actually uh there's a an a sense of you should be able to figure out what you need to do and get it done and if you need it then speak to someone sort of a oh we we're hiring adults not children so we don't need to uh get them to do everything all the time right let's chip Right, let's just rename these. Side lower. Mm. Why can't you do text selection correctly, Unity? Contribute to multiple teams. Yeah, I can I can see that uh, being problematic uh, for the number of meetings that you have. Duplicate zero. I want to move this up. So the actual curve up here, I want to make a lot uh, 
fighter are ever a lot more components. Uh, so what we'll do is we will duplicate this, scale it right down. Um, I marked that roof be hidden. Oh, stand ups, I mean, technically, they are meant to be everyone standing up the whole time because the idea is it's meant to encourage people to keep the meetings short but that's rarely the case it's more just a a status meeting that is how most people think of it these days I do one more. And one last one. But uh, it should. Okay. What I'm just going to do is create empty parent observatory outer. Right, so for this one, that wants to be zero, but we want to move it back and up and scale it. Up. Okay.
So what this should all mean is if I select all of these and turn off the mesh renderer, can't see any of them. But if I play, there's now a collider there. I can go through here. Oh, uh, where's the camera? Conference cam. I should be able to... Aha! Uh -huh. I cannot go under. Hmm. I suppose it makes sense that I can't go under. Yeah, I should also not be able to go through there, but I can go up here. Oh. Okay, but go around. So the next glides we want to do is stop me from being able to do that. Uh, which should be easy enough to do. Um, because for the inner side, I can do myself a cylinder. Uh, so if I create an empty, uh, actually, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, cause that wants to go into conference room. Conference room, uh, colliders. Dealing with Percy having caught a mouse. And where would Percy have found a mouse? Oh, wait. Why have I been... Oh, because I forgot to lock my position. Was that... Wait, why, why am I in a completely different room? Oh, yeah, because the over... <laughs> because I forgot to uh, stop myself from moving. Whoops. Right. So, in the walkway, I want to create a cylinder. And if I move out there... And I want to scale up. Okay. And 
then I want uh, cubes. Oh, I wonder if I set them high enough. I get away. Doing it in this way. And then creating another cube. I don't mind if I fall down there, but I don't want to fall down the rest of it. So let's give this a go. So I'm unable to fall down. Uh, but I can't go, so I'm going to have to... Uh, I can go here, it's just when I get to... Oh. Um... Oh dear. I, I I think the floor may be quicksand. Oh, that's a problem. Because then if you throw bugs, it will hit the colliders up there. Oh. Um. Right. And it could bounce off them and... Yeah. Let's, um, I'm going to have to rethink these colliders. I mean, the, these ones should be easy enough because all I need to do is shift that to the And duplicate. And shift that to there. It's this one that. Oh. Wait, what? Why is it a capsule collider? Okay. Capsule collider then. 
Um, right. That is not going to work. Uh, let's delete the cylinder then. Take the cube, uh, duplicate it. Bring on the mesh render so that I can see it. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. Let's just do four for now. in a bit okay so select those yeah as if the mesh renders and that should work much better okay so the bridge needs uh some well we need some more colliders for walls uh so we can do um observatory inner and we will let's create an empty uh crew quarters inner and labs inner Okay, I want to duplicate that, uh, bring up the mesh renderer, and we want um, we'll just do the simple case here. Get that and stick to labs in there. Uh, ninety threes. I want bridge outer. Uh, 
Actually, we don't need bridge. Um, and we need them slightly. Okay, so that, that, and that, I can remove that. So the bridge needs colliders. Uh, empty. I'm going to need four cubes. Hello, table. Console. Console and console. So for the hello table. Here, want to go like so, and then I want to shift these in. Okay, and then get rid of that, get rid of that. So that should be all the colliders back in. Hopefully. Uh, Right. 
right. Um, let's do some texturing in here. Uh, open recent observatory. Uh, now, if I link to bridge materials, chip base structure panel light. So I should be able to make material of that chip base. Only. Uh, add that. Uh, can also make the walkway for now just ship base but we will uh uv unwrap that and do an actual texture at some point aha uh -huh, that is why i want to use the linked ship base This one, uh, ship structure because I do it the linked way. Then, if I make changes in the bridge, it should make changes everywhere. How many rooms will the ship have? Uh, so I do have a plan. Uh, at the moment, downstairs will probably have two rooms. There's probably going to be a cargo bay. So you have. Let's just let this. So you've got the bridge here, you've got the observatory. This door here at the back is going to be a sort of a lab area. I've not said exactly what it is. Uh, what's going in there? Uh, down at the bottom at the back will be engineering. At the front will be a cargo bay. So this door here is going to open to a lift that will take you down to the cargo bay. And then at this side, there's going to be something similar size to this, but it's going to be all the crew quarters on this side. So there's probably going to be, I think I worked out one, two, three crew quarters, a small sort of bathroom area and small recharging area for me. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine rooms i think right. 
Interstellar Rift. I've not heard of that. I'll have to. I'll take a look into it. Uh... Well, this seems, uh, Similar to, oh, I can't remember what it's called. There's a 2D thing, a bit like this, where you're building up your ship and building up all the internals and stuff like that. But and I've got a, a fairly good idea of what I want it to like look like and function like now. I know what I want the ship to be like. It's just a case of, okay, what am I actually going to do with all those additional rooms? Because the bridge is just sort of, okay, it's where I enter, it's where I control things. The observatory is where I'm going to be showing things off with the screen and everything. But what do I actually do in engineering? What do I actually do in the cargo bay? How can I make those rooms interesting for me to go into for you all viewing to be able to do stuff? So it may be a thing of like, maybe there's a redeem to break something and it breaks some random thing where I have to go down into engineering and repair it. The cargo hold will probably have an airlock, so it could be I go down and meet, can meet people in the airlock and so on. Right, um, I've got all structure there done. that so all of the uh, Ooh, what if we 
Kieran, we may be able to play with what uh, we discovered yesterday. So if I go over here, bpys dot and the bpy dot contact. So that is object. Okay, so if I do zero dot material, okay, zero dot um. Dot active material. Okay, so if I went BPY dot data dot materials. Okay, so it is that one that I want. So if I did let's say objects the active material equals bpy dot data dot materials. Let's just click here. Materials or Okay, so maybe it isn't um, active material. Material slots. I've just realized. Let's zoom this in so you can see what I'm doing here. This is probably taking longer than doing all this, but it's useful to know this stuff. So if I did that. Okay, so bpy dot data object slash panel middle left back dot zero zero five that dot material blocks. Um okay, so what if I set it to do that?
Yeah, but what I want to do... Is how do you change? Uh, Blender script change object material. Okay, so if I did, if I set that back to there, I go here, material slots zero dot material. Okay, equals epy dot data dot materials slash four. Names to panel. Oh, that's why, because I, if I did uh, active uh, object dot material slots zero dot material equals bpy dot data dot materials or then that changes okay so now i know how to do this so this is fun to learn so what we do is for x in this Uh, x dot material slots zero dot material equals bpy dot data dot materials four. We go back there, hit enter. And now that updated them all. There you go. Now you know that, if I ever need to do that again, I can do. In fact, uh, we can redo that because bpy.data.materials.5 Ship structure, okay. But what am I doing there? Uh, if I uh, I want wait, why do I have that split there? No, it's going to be just as quick. So if I select all these, okay, so I think I've got all the stuff there. I don't know why.
Okay, so what I should be able to do is bar x in BPX uh, selected objects. Uh, actually, switch over to there. Uh, x dot material box zero dot material equals BPY dot data dot materials six. Okay. So uh, do that. Uh, I want to do x dot material slots dot Do you actually add the material slot again? Objects, material slot, add. And then we want that, and then we want to go there. Rx in there, x dot So if I do x dot material slots dot uh, how do you insert uh, into Python list or rather append? EPY prop collection, EPY prop collection. To do material slots. Okay, well, how do you add a material slot? Uh, Blender, add material slot Python. Okay, 
so what we want to do is that and then x dot materials Next dot data dot materials dot append none x dot material slots zero dot material ah oh, I could have just appended the material. Oh well, we'll do it this way. Equals BPY dot uh, data dot materials six. And it has just occurred to me what BPY is. Blender Python. There we go. You learn stuff all the time. Uh, so that is ship base. So that should be all good and textured for us to export. Um, models ship observatory. Okay. We have some progress there. So we've got all of our colliders back in. We've got all our bits and pieces there in. We still need to texture the floor, sort out the screen appearing, disappearing, and sort out the cameras before it's all ready. But I can potentially play around with that off stream and maybe have it ready for Sunday. We will see. Uh, but yeah, I think I may call the stream there. So let's see who is online. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's see. Oh, Zarell is on. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen uh, Monkey Wrench, the fantastic uh, animated, well, I say animated series, but there's only episode one out on YouTube. It is pretty fantastic, and I highly recommend it. Uh, so, yeah, let us go and raid him, because he's, I believe, working on episode two at the moment. Uh, right. Darrell. So, yeah, we've managed to get quite a lot done. I uh, hope you have all enjoyed the stream. Uh, thank you for everyone who followed and subscribed and watched and through bugs and lurked and whatever you did. Uh, I think this was a fairly productive stream. I mean, just, well, look at this. It's... It's coming together very well, and soon this entire room will be so much flashier. Just have to do the final touches to make it functional, and then we're good. So yes, I would like to thank you all for coming. I will be back uh, on Sunday at 1pm UK time uh, to do some more work on Coppice. Uh, 
probably some more testing. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening, a wonderful rest of your week, and as always, happy coding. <laughs>